Hi there. Welcome to this online lecture where we're going to be looking at the inventory valuation methods of FIFO, LIFO and AVCO. My name is Gareth. I'm a managing director with First Intuition. You've got my email address there, garethjohn at fi.co.uk. Quite happy if you want to email me with any questions, whether it's technical questions about this area or whether it's more general questions about your AAT studies. I've been training AAT students for nearly 20 years now, so if you need any general advice, I'm quite a good port of call. Now, first intuition, we've done quite well in recent years. We won UK Accountancy College of the Year in both 2010 and 2012, which we were very, very proud of. I was personally delighted to be awarded UK Accountancy Lecturer of the Year in 2011. And in 2013, we were nominated for Study Resource of the Year. So hopefully you're in safe hands with me. Well, let's have a look at this task we're going to work through in this online lecture. Uh, we've got a variety of transactions here in January, including from January the 1st, 500 units of opening inventory. So this must be units that they've got that they purchased perhaps in the previous year, maybe back in December. And that 500 units valued at a total of £5,000. Now, you might be able to work out £5,000 divided by 500 units. That's an average of £10 per unit for the opening inventory. We've then got, on January the 8th, some further purchases, 600 units. Now, when you purchase inventory, that's going to increase the amount you're holding. And we can see that there's a price of the purchases on the 8th of £11 per unit. January the 17th, we've got further purchases of 900 units, so another increase in inventory, total of £10,800. Now, notice when we're given the purchases information, sometimes it's per unit, and sometimes it's in total, so we need to make sure we can deal with both. Um, then on January the 24th, we've got an issue of inventory. 1,800 units issued, perhaps to sell to a customer, so that's going to reduce the level of inventory. And then January the 28th, right at the end of the month, another purchase of 800 units, and this is at £13 per unit. So you can see in yellow I've shown either the opening inventory or purchases of inventory, which will be increasing the amount we're holding. And in green, we've got the issue. It's important you distinguish between the increases in inventory and the decreases. Well, we're asked to calculate both the value of the issue on January the 24th, the 1,800 units they issued, and also the value of the closing inventory on January the 31st. So at the end of the month, how much have they still got left? And we're going to do it in three ways, FIFO, LIFO and AVCO, the three different inventory valuation methods that you need to be able to deal with in your studies. So basically I'm looking for six numbers here because we're looking for the value of the issue and the value of the closing inventory under each of three different methods. Well, hopefully you've already had a go at this, see if you can come up with your own numbers. Well, let's start with FIFO, first in first out. Now, first in, first out means we're selling the oldest units first. So the first that went into the storeroom are the first to come out, the oldest units. Now, there's different ways you could actually show your uh, workings here. I'm going to use what I think is quite a sensible approach to working through the figures here. Just looking at the transactions in chronological sequence, so starting with the earliest. In fact, the earliest transaction was the fact that we had some opening inventory. So on the 1st of January, we had 500 units, um, each valued, well, we had a total of £5,000, and we can actually therefore establish, as we'd already seen, that the cost per unit of the opening inventory is therefore £10. Just take the £5,000, divide by 500 units, so that's at a cost per unit of £10. On the 8th of January, we then purchased another 600 units for £11 per unit. Now, this way I can work out the total. If you multiply 600 units by 11, that's a total of 6,600. Now, if I pause at that point and work out what my inventory position is, well, we had 500 units, just purchased another 600. So I would now have 1,100 units at a total value. Well, if you add up the 5,000 for the opening inventory, plus 6,600, that's a total of £11,600 at the end of the day on the 8th of January. 
We've then got the 17th of January, a further purchase, 900 units, and we were given the total value of 10,800. So again, we can go to work out the cost per unit. If you take 10,800 pounds divided by 900 units, you should get that coming to 12 pounds per unit. In fact, what you may have noticed is that the cost per unit is gradually increasing. That's often the way in the world. Inflation tends to mean that prices rise over time. But again, if I now look at my inventory position, we had 1,100 units at the end of the day on the 8th of January, just bought another 900. So I've now got 2,000 units in total with a total value. Well, if you add the 11,600 plus another 10,800, that's £22,400 worth of inventory at the end of the day on the 17th. So, so far, we've gradually been increasing the amount of inventory we're holding. We then get to the 24th. Now, remember, the 24th is a very different transaction. This was an issue of an inventory. So, reducing the number of units, I'm now going to knock off the 1,800, which means you can imagine that we would now have 200 units of inventory. We had 2,000. We've just issued 1,800. So, we'll end up with 200 units. And, in fact, that 200 units will be the same under FIFO, LIFO and AVCO. Because the difference with FIFO and LIFO and AVCO is the amount we're going to value the issue at. So, in fact, the number of units will stay the same. Well, how are we going to value this 1,800 units that we're issuing on the 24th of January? Well, FIFO means first in is first out. So, we'll start by selling the oldest inventory at that point. Now, the oldest inventory was the opening inventory that we originally had. So, in fact, if I start a little working at the side here... So the first thing we'll do is sell the 500 units that was in the opening inventory. Now we know that that was at £10 per unit and we know that that has a total value of £5,000. But obviously that 500 units doesn't make up the 1,800 that we're selling. So I'll then look to the next oldest inventory which is the 600 units that we bought on the 8th. Now they were purchased at £11 per unit, total of 6,600. Now if I've so far taken 500 units of opening inventory plus 600 units from the 8th. That's 1,100 units in total. I need a total of 1,800. So I'm thinking I now need, and I'm now looking to the next oldest inventory, which was from the 17th, but I don't need that entire 900. I think I now need another 700 units to make up the 1,800. Now that's 700 units. They were at £12 per unit, the cost on the 17th. And so that gives me another £8,400 worth. So if I just double check, if you add up 500 units from the opening inventory, plus 600 units from the purchase on the 8th, plus then 700 of what we purchased on the 17th, that's my 1,800 units with a total of £20,000 of value you should find if you add up the 5,000, the 6,600 and the 8,400. So I think that under FIFO... The value of the issue is exactly £20,000. If I knock off £20,000 from the 22400 we previously had, that leaves me with £2,400 of inventory. And in fact, you can double-check the logic of that figure. Because if you think about what we've done, we've issued all of the opening inventory, so that would all have gone. We've issued all of the purchase from the 8th, so that would all have gone. And we issued 700 of the purchase that we made on the 17th. Now you can see we purchased 900. So if we've issued 700 of that, that would indeed leave us with the 200, which would be valued at 12. And if you do a quick double check, 200 units times 12 does give you £2,400. So you can double check the logic of your figure there. So that's dealing with the issue on the 24th. We've then got a final purchase. Don't forget the purchase on the 28th. Another 800 units being purchased at a cost of £13 per unit. So I can establish the total value of those purchases, just 800 units times 13. That gives me another £10,400 worth of inventory. And you can see that if you add on that final purchase, I've now got 1,000 units of inventory at the end of the month with a total value of £12,800. Now, if I just tidy up my 
answer here and then we can summarize the position that we've got to so there's my overall working and the figures I'm interested in remember I wanted the value of the issue so under FIFO it's 20,000 and the value of the closing inventory at the end of the month the remaining thousand units on the 31st of January which you can see is 12,800 so those are the two figures I was interested in for FIFO Well, what if we now start considering our second method, which is LIFO. So last in is first out. And in fact, under LIFO, a lot of the information is actually the same. We still had the opening inventory of 500 units, still with a total value of £5,000. We still purchased 600 units on the 8th. They were at £11 per unit, giving a total of 6600 So at the end of the day, on the 8th of January, we've still got 1,100 units with a total value of 11600 On the 17th, we still purchased 900 at a total of £10,800, which was £12 per unit. So in fact, at the end of the day, on the 17th, we would still have 2,000 units with a total value of 22400 Because your different inventory valuation methods, all they change is the way you value the issue. The purchases are dealt with in exactly the same way. You just add the purchases on, both adding the units and adding the cost. What's going to differ, though, is the way we value the issue, in this case, the issue of the 1,800. Now, let's think carefully about how we're going to value it this time. Well, LIFO means last in is first out. So we actually sell the newest units of inventory first. So when I'm selling the 1,800, the first place that I will now go is the most recent purchase of 900 on the 17th. That's the last stock that went into the storeroom. That's therefore the first that will go out. So if I do a little working, we're now going to take all 900 at £12, which we know is 10,800. We'll then go back to the, the next newest units of inventory, which is the 600 we bought on the 8th at £11 each. And you can perhaps see that that so far, well, 900 plus 600, that's five, uh, 1,500 units so far. So when I then go back to the next newest inventory, which is actually the opening inventory, hopefully you can see I only actually need 300 units from the opening inventory to make up my 1,800. That 300 is at the £10 per unit from the opening inventory. So again, it's the same 1,800 units that I need. But can you see I've this time taken the newest units first. Now that gives me a different cost of the issue. If you add up 10,800 plus 6,600 plus 3,000, this time that's 20,400. So in fact, when I'm now valuing this issue, it's going to be valued at 20,400. Now you might remember under FIFO, that was valued at 20,000 exactly. You can see with LIFO, it's valuing the issue at a slightly higher cost. Now, the reason for that is, can you see, we're taking more units at the most recent price of 12. And the most recent price was the highest price, wasn't it? We've taken fewer units this time at the oldest price of 10. Um, so you would typically expect LIFO to give you a slightly higher value for the issue. Well, if I knock off that 20,400 from the 22,400, that leaves me with... £2,000, and the reason that's different is we've now got rid of all of the purchase on the 17th, we've got rid of all of the purchase on the 8th, and if you remember we got rid of 300 units from the opening inventory, meaning I'm left with 200 units of the opening inventory, that's my 200 units, and the opening inventory was at 10, and 200 units at 10 gives me the 2,000, so again you can double check the logic of that figure. We've then got the final purchase of 800 at 13 which still has a total value of 10,400. And so I'll still have 1,000 units of closing inventory. If you add the 800 units onto the 200 you had, but at a different value, I've now got 12,400 pounds as the closing value of inventory on the 31st of January here. So just to summarize again, if I tidy my workings up a bit here, just to summarize the end result there. What is it I'm interested in? Well, I'm interested in the value of the issue on the 24th, which under LIFO is £20,400, and the closing inventory value, 
which under LIFO is now £12,400, and you'll notice those figures are both a wee bit different than we got under FIFO. Well, we've looked at FIFO, we've looked at LIFO. What about our third technique, which is AVCO or average cost? And again, much of this is the same. We've still got the 500 units at £10 per unit with a total of £5,000 value. We still purchase 600 units on the 8th at £11 per unit, giving six 600 We still purchase 900 units on the 17th at a total of 10800 So, in fact, at the end of the day on the 17th, we've still got 2,000 units with a total value of 22400 So, you can see when you're making purchases, it doesn't matter which valuation technique you're dealing with. It's only when you make issues that the difference arises. So, it's only going to be the cost of the issue that is going to differ. And the way AVCO works is AVCO is thinking that perhaps when we make the issue of 1,800 units, perhaps we don't really know which units we're selling. Perhaps we don't know whether we're selling the opening inventory or the purchase on the 8th or the purchase on the 17th. Maybe these units are all just jumbled together in our storeroom. Maybe we don't know which units we're selling, so we can therefore take the average cost. Now, the way we'd work out the average cost is at the end of the day on the 17th, we had 22,400 of value for 2,000 units in total. We can therefore take the 22,400, divide by the 2,000 units to work out the average cost per unit. And I get an average cost per unit there of £11.20. Which you can see makes a bit of sense because the 2,000 units is a bit of a mixture of some at 10, some at 11, some at 12. So it makes sense that the average is somewhere in amongst those figures, £11.20. So what we're going to do is we're now going to value the entire 1,800 units that we're issuing at that £11.20. So we don't know whether it's units at 10 or 11 or 12 that we're selling, so we just take the average cost of £11.20 and 1,800 units. And that gives me £20,160 which if you now deduct from the 22,400 we had, I've got remaining inventory of 2,240. In fact, you can double check that figure because that should be at the £11.20 per unit as well. If you're issuing at the average cost, you should have inventory remaining at the average cost and 200 times 11.20 is indeed 2,240. So in fact, AVCO in some respects is a lot easier than either FIFO or LIFO folks. I don't need to start tallying up where the 1,800 units are coming from. I don't need to worry which stock I'm selling. I just do it all at the average cost. Well, that's the value of the inventory on the 24th of January. We've got £2,240. We've then still got the purchase on the 28th, 800 units at 13, and that's still 10,400. And so that takes me to my 1,000 units with a total value of inventory at the end of the month this time of £12,640. So the two figures that I'm interested here are the value of the issue on the 24th, which under AVCO was £20,160. And what you might notice is that figure is in between the FIFO and the LIFO values which kind of makes sense because AVCO is a kind of hybrid of the two. And then the value of inventory at the end of the month on the 31st of January would be £12,640. And again, you should notice that that sits between the FIFO and the LIFO values for inventory. So we've now come up with our two figures for each of FIFO, LIFO and AVCO. Hopefully you've followed the process I've used there. It is useful, I think, in your assessments to set up little workings on a sheet of paper so you can work through it nice and mechanically. But I'm hoping you found that useful. Um, like I said, feel free to drop me an email if you've got any questions. Other than that, um, maybe I'll see you next time.